Hello everyone. Uh, say hi, Ritwik. Thanks so much for taking out time and uh, being a part of this uh, platform, Richard Dialogues. I'll quickly start by giving a quick introduction about you. Definitely not going to do any justice. This is like a few lines that I've prepared about you. You've done so much in your life already. So Ritwik Bhattacharya has been India number one for five years in squash. He's been in the top 40 in the world. And he became the first and actually to break into the world top 50. And he has been inspiring so many of us younger kids uh, till date, and he is continuing to do so. He is retired. He retired from the professional squash circuit in 2010. And then uh, a few years ago, he big part his academy, Start Academy, which is based in Kalote, Moksahi village in Maharashtra. Uh, the full Start Academy, Start Squash, Temple Field Training. But Ritwik is doing some very good and meaningful work. He's come out of the city of Bombay and now he's set up his own center where he's training more than 100 players who are from, who are from this village in Kalute. And uh, Ritwik, firstly, welcome again. And uh, I'll quickly tell you my intent behind this blog, why I've created the blog. The reason why I created this dialogue platform was I'll, bringing, I'll try to bring people from different backgrounds who have had different stories, different life journeys and who I can come based on their experiences. They can share their experiences and the learnings that are coming out of these experiences can help people who are listening to these dialogues in a positive way, a meaningful way. A lot of times, especially I have felt this in my life where I felt lost. I have no idea what to do next. I can't find meaning. I can't find purpose. So a lot of us are confused uh, in our lives. And I think like based on the learnings that might come out of these dialogues, that might help us in a more meaningful way. That's the whole intent behind this. So yeah, thanks. I have... Hi, Mudit. Thanks. Hi. That's a uh, long introduction. Uh, great to be here. Great to see you uh, all grown up now. And yeah. uh, <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, I forgot to mention I also trained. Ritwik was my coach also. He uh, That was like so many years ago. So Ritwik has been actively involved with all of us. And always forever grateful for all the lessons you have given us, Ritwik. So thanks for that. And um, yeah. And Ritwik, so the first point that I had for you was uh, can we touch upon your journey in squash over the years and uh, basically how you got into the sport? Wow. Um, I started playing, um, I think, since. I grew up and, and stood up. I was playing only. I didn't like uh, all the other parts of growing up, which was the studies and everything else. And so I was out at the uh, clubs. Or you know, my dad was in the Air Force, so we had uh, small clubs with a tennis court, uh, a swimming pool, some baddie courts. And I would my post school life used to be in these areas. You know, I was playing all kinds of sports and a lot of tennis actually um, in the early years. And then I went to the Rashtriya Indian Military College in Dehradun, which is a school, which is a boarding school um, for um, joining the armed forces. And mm -hmm. it's one of the oldest, it's 100 year uh, plus old school. And they had a very rich heritage in squash. You know, Brigadier Manchanda was from RIMC and pretty much the whole uh, services army team was from uh, our school. And so I got a great amount of exposure. I went and saw the services players play in IMA when I just joined the school in eighth grade. Uh, mm -hmm. I was 12 years old and I think squash chose me. It's got so many uh, different facets uh, in the game. It's not just a simple game because of the number of walls you have and the number of variations and angles you can hit uh, and combinations. Uh, it's a super exciting sport. Yeah. And it's a sport where, um, you're, where you're really pushed in all areas, you know, because the physical yeah. chess of it, of how you move around on the court was really exciting. So the I think from our military school, they pushed us into going or they gave us an opportunity to go play the inter-school nationals, which was in Indore. And then I saw the national junior players for the first time in 92. And uh, I was like, this is a good way to get out of school. And yet, uh, have an adventure and test yourself and see how good you can really be. And within four or five years, I had uh, you know started doing much better in squash than any other sport. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think the turning point was when, uh, in my tenth grade, I 
got a chance to represent India at the World Juniors in Cairo when oh. I was still 16 years old. Mm. Uh, 1996, I think that was. And to go from Dehradun to Egypt to play squash and represent India was a big deal. It sort of made me or opened my brain saying that, you know, there's more opportunities available because back in the day, in the 90s, there weren't many opportunities. It was armed forces or the, the usual careers. And to play professional sport was a distant uh, dream thought. And yeah. no one knew how you could even uh, make ends meet. Yeah. So, and then uh, making the Indian team um, was a defining moment and there was another way to serve the country. So, I was like, you know, okay, my, my father served uh, the Indian Air Force and flew fighter jets. Mm -hmm. And this is one more way where no Indian has ever broken into the top 100. Yeah. Uh, even though um, our, our brothers in Pakistan were dominating the sport at that time, you know. So, yeah. I was like, you know, we can do it as well. And that got me um, excited, curious, and there would be an adventure since then. You know, I was lucky to travel to many countries, train in Malaysia, train in Pakistan, yeah. uh, train in Egypt for a couple of years. Then I moved to England and yeah. uh, trained with Neil Harvey, who was coaching Peter Nickel. Yeah. So it was, uh, you know, I mean, I had a brilliant uh, insight while I was doing it of how lucky I was to be able to do it, mm -hmm. to be able to wake up every morning and play with the best players, test yourself push your limits, uh, the university of life. Uh, yeah. And so that's the reason, uh, that's the journey. Yeah. <laughs> I think you correctly mentioned that squash gave you an opportunity to travel across the world and then you went to different countries, you met with a lot of different players. And like when I was younger also, I did see you compete at tournaments also. So just wondering like what has been your biggest learning so far through this journey? like of squash and traveling, what would you think has been like one of the main learnings for you so far? I, I believe you should, uh, you know, we we are all have the ability to imagine, we have the ability to manifest. We If we have a pure dream, a pure thought, um, yeah. it manifests itself as much as energy as you give it. So, you know, basically yeah. uh, live the dream, man. You can how many kids have a chance at 18 to open the calendar of the world's squash tour or yeah. any calendar in their sport and say, these are the countries I want to visit. And I'm, you know, my first five mm. tournaments was in South America after playing the second world juniors uh, in Princeton. Yeah. I went for five weeks uh, to South America and played in Ecuador, Colombia, uh, Brazil, Sa in Sao Paulo, in um, Lima, in Peru. So, you know, it was like a six week out on my, in, with a suitcase back in the day without credit cards or anything. Yeah. It was really an adventure. I, mean, I should do that every year. My most exciting thing was take a break at New Year's yeah. and then look at the calendar and plan for the whole year. Yeah. And where I'm going to go, what I'm going to do, then figure out the budget and then start doing yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you also mentioned like about the part where you said manifesting your dream and that's such a powerful line that you said because even after your professional career, you continue to play with a lot of youngsters all across India and you train them. And now, then you had your dream of setting up your own academy in Kalote, which which is where you are sitting right now as you're speaking. So, can you tell us a bit about what is your what is start and what was the whole intent behind it? Yeah. So, I mean, when I stopped playing uh, in 2011, I mean, I wanted to really give back to the sport, which gave me a lot, and uh, I straight away tried to uh, help at the Indian Federation. Yeah. With the, which was about moving to Chennai and then I realized that the Federation had its own uh, system going on which was uh, they were happy with it and yeah. I didn't want to upset anything so then I worked with the Professional Squash Association you know I was their regional rep for Asia we set up some tournaments we started the Indian Squash Circuit but along the way um, I came to this uh, valley over here to meet a friend and I saw this uh, beautiful place and yeah. uh, I think uh, I um, the the dream manifested because I recognized that this place is one of the most uh, amazing places. And then the land uh, also when my third or fourth trip, my friend uh, Munna he came and asked me that you know there is this piece of land and you've been thinking about making an academy or yeah. do you think you want to make an academy? So I went and saw the land and it was on this lake and it's like I couldn't believe that uh, this land existed you know or was available. And uh, on the, I asked uh, Muna, my, my friend, what happened? Why is this no one taking this land? And he's like, because there's a tribal village touching it. 
So I was like, this is perfect. You know, if I had a piece of land, I would like to make one quote on it. So, you know, you're not, uh, yeah. uh, you're not wasting resources. You know, you, there has to be, it has to be used. You know, there's so yeah. many one quotes lying all over the world, which yeah. are not being used every day, you know? And so yeah. I didn't want to make too many quotes. And if I had made a big quote or made yeah. three quotes to make an academy, mm -hmm. uh, I would have lost the tribal kids because they would have been like, this guy's feet are not on the ground. He doesn't yeah. understand that we have nothing over here and he's making three squash quotes over here. Yeah. So, you know, uh, there, thereafter, my role has been that, you know, I believe that this land, we, we as human beings can't own land. Mm -hmm. The land owns us. We yeah. are caretakers. It's been there before us, you know, and it's going to be there after us. And if we take care of the land properly, uh, like I remember we try to get, uh, even though the land has a lake touching it, there's yeah. no... Uh, your water all year round. So we had to dig a bore well and it's a very rocky valley. Yeah. So not many bore wells have happened. And when the bore well happened, there was like a huge, it's touching the village. So the whole village was celebrating like it was holy in May. And, you know, uh, I remember feeling that, man, this is what feeling rich means. You know, your land has pure drinking water. So yeah. I've learned so many things and, you know, me being over here and uh, having a dream of making an academy has been something which I've walked into and, you know, I mean, like, wow, th th what better way could I uh, live and uh, do something impactful? And, yeah. Um, I think I'm the lucky one, actually, you know, where, who, yeah. and I'm so grateful every day when I wake up and that I'm living this dream as well, where we have an environment where the thought has been while making the Start Academy um, yeah. has been that, you know, a 12-year-old Ritwik who wanted to train and play squash what mm. would I, what kind of environment would he be mm. able to have or we could create where a champion kid can get the best space to become yeah. a champion? You know, we, we yeah. don't create, in my life, I, when I, while growing up, I was struggling to play in squash sports. Members would come in or it was not allowed or you couldn't play at this time yeah. and there's a member here. And, you know, I was like, we need to have somewhere outside the city where you are just eating, sleeping, drinking squash and you can really immerse yeah. in it. Yeah. And today, uh, six years later, it's a reality. I don't even know how it happened, you know, <laughs> but it's happened. <laughs> no, this is definitely such a great story, Ritwik. And you're continuing to, you know, like expand your center where you are. And the one, one thing I was wondering was, so you chose this area, which, you know, a lot of people were not taking. And this was, and you were very, like, happy with the idea that the tribal village is touching it. And then you can actually get to work with the kids. So how has it been for you to work with these kids? And then squash, like when you first took squash to this village, how was the response to these kids? Did they know about squash? Did, you, did they learn from scratch? And now what do they think about this sport? And how is it sort of growing among the kids? Yeah. It's crazy. You know, we think we are superior, but these kids are avatar kids. They've grown up in the forest. You yeah. know, uh, and yeah. they they are at one with nature. They are running into the forest and living on a lake with waterfalls all around and going for treks. Yeah. So the first one was to lower your ego a little bit and say, you know, uh, how equal are we really? Do yeah. we all think about what, what is equal? Yeah. You know, are we treating the kids from the city differently? Are we treating the mm -hmm. kids from which background? What is the difference? Yeah. And then I realized that the kids in the city hadn't got the time. You know, I was... Uh, uh, if you need to get to another to an international level, you need to be able to put in uh, invest seven yeah. eight hours a day of your time and energy and effort and have full quality training the whole day and to do it every day. Every yeah. kid is not got the time. They, most of them are training one hour in the morning, one hour in the evening. Yeah. So while we came over here, then I saw the land. Then I sat on this. Uh, we just made a small hut over here, uh, you know, thatched wooden hut. And I sat over there for one whole season. Saw the rains observe these kids, they observe me. We started playing some basic games. I got a football coach in from one of my friends, Rohit, from uh, Mulund. He came in, he used to come on one weekend, I would come on the other weekend. And yeah. we started, you know, playing sports, doing some basic games with them. He was amazing with them. And, you know, he had, he spoke Marathi as well. So yeah. within a couple of years, we, they had a lot of trust with us. And that's when I planted the idea or it came said, we, now we have the resources to make that first sport. Yeah. Uh, we had some help from our friends over here in the valley itself. Um, so this started becoming a reality and they were like, oh, there's this um, building coming up. And then they figured out 
by googling and stuff like that on their phones and all that what is squash and then we got paddle tennis bats with a squash ball and you know which you play be- beach paddle tennis yeah. so we got them to do 100 continuous shots and 200 right. continuous shots to kids yeah. so you know they got their hand eye coordination mm. and then 2017 so 6 years ago but we started this in 2013 14 yeah. when i had already uh, acquired the land and everything else so yeah. It's it's been a journey. It's been ten years where it's been you know slowly, gently, without building their trust, where they trust us to a level where they know that we're not there to take advantage of it. We're here to. My main thought has been to if you make something, if you create a sport or a club or yeah. academy, yeah. it must be used consistently. There's no point just waiting for the champion kids to turn up over there, train them, and the rest of the time the court is lying empty. Yeah. You know, no one's using it. It's like you know, there's. Yeah. In this one court, there's the most one, uh, most single most used one court in the world. There are kids playing from morning three four yeah. thirty four in the morning till late yeah. night, and yeah. you can play at night as well if you want, you know. So, a lot of things which hold us back because yeah. we aren't really a sporting nation, you know. We don't have that sporting fiber which is normal in other countries and yeah. it has to be developed because that's the next level of development where why aren't Indians the best in sport and why is everyone not encouraging yeah. everyone to be the best they can be in sport you know I mean yeah. how can it hurt and yeah. so those things will come across if we're still early mm-hmm. another five ten years sports will become yeah. a major industry you yeah. know and it'll grow really rapidly where it'll broaden its pace yeah but uh, the way has to be shown and you know we have to create our own models I don't want to make 500 academies across India I just want to make this one yeah. Uh, model or a thought and yeah. say can it can we develop differently you know so that's the beginning of Start Academy and uh, yeah it's been a lot of fun yeah. I think you shared some very crucial points along with your story you also said about how treating everyone as equals like not thinking that you know like someone from the city is that or someone from the village is that everyone has the same potential like if you if you talk to them if you spend time at the end of the day they all have the same organ same body so it's all about you know like putting in the effort and what you're doing is like coming out and giving all of your knowledge to these kids it's been very nice and of course like since they are here like they must be more absorbent about the things that you're telling them because they have the hunger as well right no so the thing is that we, we as a we have to really observe how equal we really are with yeah. kids you know, yeah. we, we cannot be unequal with kids. You know, kids know they're very honest. You you, yeah. you have to treat everyone equally. Yeah. And uh, they can have different methods of training. Like the amount of training I do with the with the kids from the village, what yeah. I would do with a national junior in five days, I would do with them in five weeks. You know, yeah. so I give them more time, more space. You don't want them to blow up in their brain and say, oh, it's too yeah. much or it's too tough. Yeah. You know, it has to be much slower and more patient with them. And but at the same time, they can't want for food, for kit, for shoes, for travel. If yeah. they're going for a tournament, they must fly, the, they must stay in a hotel where everyone else stays. You know, we, we have to look at every area of their development. I know the whole family, their parents work with us in the academy yeah. and yeah. Uh, some of the other friends' farmhouses over here. Their uh, Grandparents, Munna, who's been here 20 years, uh, Munish Makija, he's been here, he's been, he knows them for 20 years. So we've jumped into a, 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 I mean, there's no corruption as yet and the only corruption is through us. So as much as negative impact we have of just being over here, yeah. we need to have a 10 times more positive impact, you know, and that's been the thought because... The worst thing would be in our enthusiasm to do good, we corrupt them. (laughs) Because they're already pure. You know, we have to learn and say, how do we learn to um, make it mix in a very normal manner where it's a mixing bowl where you're putting kids from the armed forces coming in, kids from RNC, from NDA. So, you know, I got different walks because the impact is crazy. You know, we had a kid uh, whose um, Instagram handle was squash underscore Rahul. You know, within three months of the lockdown, and he was here during the lockdown, he was the number two in India. Uh, and within three months of him being over here, great kid, works hard, was a good ambassador to squash. He's from uh, Jindal. He's playing mm. on the national circuit still. Mm. Um, we had six or seven kids from the tribal village who had squash underscore Naresh, squash underscore Raju, mm. squash underscore Arjun. 
So yeah. I was like, you know, they suddenly uh, there's a quantum jump where suddenly a tribal kid is on Instagram and has an Instagram account and they are yeah. copying everything, you know, whatever they're seeing. So we have to be very careful. So I started getting more kids from the from NDA, from RIMC, from different areas, from different cities. Yeah. So they understand and they pick up a lot more good and then the bad is pointed out because suddenly kids were throwing a racket. And I was like, you didn't know what squash was five years ago. How are you throwing a racket? Yeah, <laughs> Where did yeah. you learn this from? So, so from the kids who are coming from outside, kids from Bombay and Delhi, who are playing on the circuit, one of them in their irritation has thrown their racket. So this, these kids are picking that up as well. Yeah. So they're super sharp and observant. And, you know, um, mm. we have a big responsibility to show the right way as well as yeah. You can't later on once he's playing good squash, suddenly start treating them like champions. You have to treat everyone like a champion. And yeah. then the champion will emerge, you know. <laughs> no, no. Thanks, thanks a lot for sharing this advice. One last thing I know you shared a lot already. Uh any advice or anything based on your life so far you would want to give to the younger people, you know, like who are who might be a bit confused about where they are in life and what they want to do. A lot of us are actually so. A uh, lot of times you don't know, you know, what the calling is and what would you advise uh, to such people there? Yeah. And uh, listen to your heart. Yeah. You know, sit on your own, learn how to sit on your own yeah. with your thoughts. Mm. Um, don't uh, just because you're troubled, try and reach out to more people and try and get their inputs. Mm. Isolate yourself. Yeah. Uh, go back to your school, go back to your uh, favorite place, spend a weekend over there, think yeah. what you want to do, build the energy and then go out doing it because you must understand that both options, either you do that thing or you don't. For example, I wanted to play squash. If I hadn't played squash, I would join the armed forces and I would be in a pilot, great life. Along yeah. the way, I would have still had many regrets or not. I should have played, might have played. Mm -hmm. This way, I took those to play squash and play professionally. <laughs> Along the way, I see my friends who were in school with me who are now brigadiers and colonels and they have their own life. And yeah. there may be, may be times think, man, that could have been a good life. So that will always happen. No matter what route you take, you don't yeah. work. We have no culture of taking a gap year. We make yeah. our kids study too fast. Whereas yeah. the kids abroad are taking a gap year after their 10th, after their 12th, in the middle of their college to yeah. learn, to travel, to search, to explore, to come up with new ideas. There's so much opportunity now. And that's why everyone's confused. You know, if you have less mm. opportunity, you mm. know that this is my either left or right. And then you mm. live with it. So because you have more opportunity, you need to explore yourself more, see <laughs> what is available, yeah. uh, make a good logical decision, take risks, yeah. live your life. Don't live with regret. You know, yeah. that's the most important thing. Do it. Then yeah. you learn something, you know, and I really believe in apprenticing. If you want to work in shipping, go outside the ship and stand over there and say, I want to enroll and take the ship. So, mm -hmm. you know, go, you want yeah. to become a big store, go and work in a store. You, know, yeah. you want to do something online. So, you, yeah, one is you get your general education, but then you need to specialize, yeah. go to the best, sit with them, discuss yeah. with them and learn your craft and then start doing it, you know. Yeah. Solid advice. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much, Ritwik. This is all I had for you today. And again, like, I just want to thank you again, you know, for taking our time and sharing your story, sharing about the kid, everything, what you're doing. I know you're a very busy person. So again, thank you. Busy, man. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> Take care. Lovely to talk to you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thanks,